So let's get started. Just a little bit about where I am today. Um, I know Steph knows, but for those of you who don't know, I mean, and they're watching this uh, maybe later on, but my name is Jose Vargas and I am an ordained minister. I am also U.S. Secret Service Officer, protect the 45th and the, the 45th President of the United States and the Vice President of the United States, turn leadership development coach. All right, where I literally help leaders like you execute on your biggest ideas, influence your team, or if you don't have a team, build your influence um, and increase your organization's profits and most importantly, your impact. All right. So I'm going to be giving you, like you see on the screen, the five proven ways to connect with your audience. Nat Turner said this. He said, good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. That's good, right? Good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. So here's what I want to do. Um, for, for the people who are joining us live, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're, you're on Zoom, I want you to comment on the comment section. I'm just going to take a, literally a few seconds to do this, but I want you to comment and I want you to answer these two questions. Uh, or, and, and, I, and if you want to write them down as well in your notebook, but who is it that you're communicating with? Who is your audience, right? Who is it that you're communicating with? So who's your audience? It may be, it may be moms, it may be, it may be dads, it may be uh, uh, students, it may be communicators like we're doing today, right? So who is your audience? And the second one is what message do you want to share with your audience? What is it that you want to say? What is the message that you want to communicate? Because just because we're talking doesn't mean that we're communicating, right? And that's the point of this uh, training today. So as you're writing that down, if you want to write it on the chat box, I would, I mean, that would appreciate it. Plus it gives you an opportunity to express yourself to a, a, just an even larger audience as people are watching this. And this is going to go through our training uh, platform as well. So if you, if you feel comfortable, put it on the chat or also comment on Facebook live. All right. So I'm going to share with you a story. Uh, it's a funny story. It's a story by a, na a man named Jorge Rodriguez. All right. Jorge Rodriguez was an old West bank robber from Mexico and who operated along the Texas border around the 1900. And Rodriguez was so successful uh, that the Texas Rangers established a special force to try to stop him. Uh, late one afternoon, one of these special Rangers saw Rodriguez slipping in across the border back into Mexico and he trailed him at a discreet distance. And he watched as this outlawed uh, person returned to his home village and mingled with the people in the square. When Rodriguez went into his favorite cantina, relaxed, the ranger slipped in and he managed to get a drop on him. With a pistol to the bank robber's head, he says, Jorge Rodriguez, I know who you are. I've come to give back all the money that you've stolen from the banks in Texas. Unless you give me the money, I'm gonna blow your brains out. Rodriguez could see the man's badge. He could see and discern his hostile intent. But there was a problem. The problem was that he didn't speak English. So he began rapidly speaking in Spanish. And he said, but the ranger had a problem. He couldn't speak Spanish. So there was a little miscommunication here, right? A little communication problem. But just then, as they were talking, a young boy came up and he said in English, I can help. I speak Spanish and English. Do you want me to be your translator? The ranger nodded. The boy quickly explained everything the ranger had said and nervously Rodriguez answered, tell the big ranger that I have not spent a cent of the money. If he will go to the town, face north, count down five stones, he will find the loose one there. Pull it out and all the money will be behind there. Please tell him quickly. The boy looked back at the ranger and he says, Senor Jorge Rodriguez is a brave man. He's ready to die. <laughs> so the point of that story is what George Bernard said. He said that the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. So whether you're speaking to a church or you're speaking, uh, go back a little bit. So whether, whether you're speaking to a, a church or whether you're speaking to an audience and you're trying to sell a product, the biggest problem is that just because you're talking, uh, you think that, you, that communication has taken place. But the reality is, that that is an illusion, according to George, George Bernard Shaw and according to this funny story that we just read, right? So a little, a little bit about me. I grew up in Trent, New Jersey, for those of you who may not know. And 
on Mama Street, and this was the apartment complex here, or the, the apartment that we lived in. We actually lived in the second and third floor um, of this building here. And I grew up in this for the first probably nine to 10 years of my life. And it was a, a, an area where gang violence was the norm. Drug deals were the norm. I mean, I remember events as a kid that my mom would make us duck on the floor because of all the violence that was taking place. But in spite of this, I had a dream in my heart. And at a very early age, I felt called to lead people. And I felt called to lead. So, and, and, and as I look back and I started thinking about this process, really, really my first leadership role and communicator role was as a crossing guard. I thought it was as a youth group secretary, but even before then, I was about eight years old and I wore that little fancy belt that you see on the screen there. But... I was in charge of my class. I was able to tell my class, right, and instruct my class, but that was short-lived. And this is a funny story, but it was short-lived because I said something that the teacher didn't like. And immediately I was stripped from that position, right? And I remember how I felt. I still remember how I felt. And I was eight years old then, and, and I felt disappointed. I felt like somebody stripped something from me, but that was a metaphor of the power of your words and the power of my words. And in my situation, how my big mouth got me in trouble. How many of you have ever been there, right? Your big mouth got you in trouble. So what we wanna do today is we wanna share some practical principles um, that literally you can apply in your life right now. You can apply in your job, you can apply in your ministry, you can apply in your business or whatever it is that you want to accomplish in this season of your life, you're gonna be able to apply these principles. And our purpose here today is to raise your level of awareness to give you some really practical information that, again, you're gonna be able to reply right away, all right? So if you're excited, just give me some thumbs up, right? If you're excited on Facebook, just comment, I'm excited to, to hear these. So I wanna convince each and every one of you listening to this training, if you're not already, that we're all leaders in one way or another. You're all leaders, right? And leadership comes down to one thing. One of my mentors for the past 15 years at a distance has been John C. Maxwell, leadership expert and renowned leader around the, uh, around the world. And he said this, he defines leadership as leadership is influence, nothing more and nothing less. Now, I have my own definition of leadership that I came up with and filed the way. I'm sure you have your own definition of leadership, but for the purpose of this training, we're gonna use John's definition of leadership. Leadership is influence. And influence then, and I want you to write that down, and, and influence depends on our ability to connect with other people. It depends on our ability to connect with other people, okay? So if it's influence, uh, go back for a minute. Uh, the one thing that stands between you and greater success in your personal and professional life. There's only one thing that stands. How many of you want to know what that is, right? One thing that stands between you and greater success in your personal and professional life. It isn't more knowledge. It isn't more skills. It isn't more experience. It isn't more talent. Even though I'm a proponent for you to grow in all those areas, but it's your ability to connect with other people. It's your ability to connect with people. John Maxwell said this, and, and you'll see it on the screen there. He says, if you ask me what's one thing that you can do to be more successful, I'd say learn to communicate. So in a world where success is increasingly dependent upon collaboration, you and I must learn to connect with people. If COVID-19 is not teaching us that we need each other in order to succeed, I don't know what else will teach us this. If COVID-19 is not teaching us that you can't succeed all by yourself, right? That we need each other, that we succeed in collaboration, um, I don't know what will. So it's a common misconception now, and I, want, and I want to get personal here because it's a common misconception that some people have the ability to, or are born with the ability to connect with people. And, and the truth is that anyone can learn how to make every communication a powerful opportunity for a powerful connection. And I was one of those people, I remember as a teenager, I would travel around with this guy that I, you know, I looked up to, he was a preacher. And I remember I said to my mom, man, I can never do that. You know, I can never reach the people and connect with the people the way he's connecting with them. But the reality is that you can develop these skills, all right? 
Now, let me ask you guys a question and, uh, on Zoom, and let me ask you guys a question on Facebook, or if you're watching this, I want you to really be honest with yourself, and I want you to raise your hand. How many of you want to improve your, the results that you're getting in your life? Wave at me, right? All of us. And if, you're on, and if you're on Facebook Live, I want you to comment, I want to improve my results, right? So for a lot of people, improving their results, for, for, it looks different for a lot of people. For some is that they want more money, right, to do the things that they feel called to do. For some is they want more, more time with their loved ones. Uh, for some is a different lifestyle. They want a different lifestyle for their kids or for their own life. For some is relationships. They want to improve in their relationship. For some is they want to be healthier, right, and have healthier, flourishing relationship. And for other people on this training, is you simply want to grow. You want to grow as a leader. You want to grow as a person. But what I've come to realize is this, guys, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, is that if you want to get better results, you got to get better at connecting with people. And if I want to get better at, at seeing results, I need to get better at connecting with people. So I'm talking about if you're a father listening to me or if you're a mother listening to me, if you're a spouse, if you're a son or if you're a daughter, if you run your own business or, or a nonprofit organization, Okay, if you're an employee or even a manager or CEO, it doesn't matter really who you are. You can improve your results by improving your ability to connect with people and influence people in an ethical way. So if you want to improve your marriage, right, your marriage might be good. But if you want to improve it and make it better, you need to connect. You need to get better at connecting with your spouse because connecting with your spouse will make a huge difference. If you want a promotion in your job, right, you need to get better at connecting with your boss, connecting with your customers, connecting with your peers, connecting with your team. If you want to get better at improving your relationships, your friendships, with your friends, or whoever it is that, you're, that you want to connect with, it's all about connecting. So the principle, the first principle that I want to share with each and every one of you is that connecting will increase your influence in every situation. I want you to write that down. Connecting will increase your influence in every situation. It doesn't matter who you are, what you're trying to do, what your message is. So what is connecting? Let's look at the definition here. Connecting is the ability to identify with people and relate to them in such a way that will increase your influence with them. That's powerful. It's your ability, and you can develop this ability, to identify with people and relate to them in such a way that increases your influence with them. Now, I want you to think about your own life for a moment. Who influences you? Think about that. Who has influence over your decisions? Who has influence over your thoughts? Who has influence over what you say or what you do, right? And if you're arguing with me right now, like I know some of you might, <laughs> you're probably nobody influences me. I, you know, I, I'm all grown, right? But the reality is, if you think about this, I want to challenge that because we're all influenced by someone. If you look, at, you look back in your life and you look at your high school coach or even your best friend today or even your spouse or your gym buddy, they have influence over you. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you have ever been to a restaurant based on a friend's recommendation? Raise your hand. <laughs> How many ever bought a product based on a friend's recommendation? Right? How many of you ever... Uh, you know, did anything based on her friends, watched the movie based on her friend's recommendation, right? So there's, there's the proof right there. All of us raised our hands. Why? So that means that you've been influenced. So the reason that they can influence you, right, is because they connected with you. So when I was in sixth grade, and this is a personal story, but when I was in sixth grade, I had a substitute teacher, one of the, the best teachers that I've ever had, and her name was Miss K. And Miss Kay had her hands full with our class because we were a busy class. I mean, I was in it. So it was a, a busy class. So she did something so powerful. She began to connect as soon as she came in to, to substitute our class. And she was going to be a substitute for months. Uh, she started connecting with us. She started building rapport with us. And one day she started doing something amazing. She started giving out awards and appreciation for different things that we were doing in class. So she started noticing different things that we were doing. To one student, he, receives, he received the best grades for the week award, right? Notice I didn't get that one. So another student got the best behavior award. Guess who didn't get that one either, right? So I got the best smile award. 
And I remember, I still have the picture. I have the best smile in class and I, and I was proud of that. So I got that award. But Miss K, I remember even with my, with my mom's permission, she would take us to her house and, and, and you know, interact with her kids. We were the same age. She would, she would take us to sporting events. Um, she went above and beyond to connect with me. And I went from being one of her worst students in class to becoming one of her best students in class. To the point where even to this day, you know, a few years back, I had, I wanted to introduce my wife to her and we had lunch, and I mean, dinner together with her and her husband. So she influenced me because she connected with me. So the truth is that anyone can turn, can learn how to communicate, right? And can learn how to make every communication and turn it into a powerful connection. Um, so it is within your reach, right? It's within your reach, it's within my reach. But here's the thing it's out of your comfort. It is within your reach, but it's out of your comfort. And the reason that learning to connect can make such a big difference in all of your results is that it's such a neglected, a neglected skill. Most people don't give it any thought whatsoever that it's, it's, a, it's a skill that they need to develop in order to connect with people, either because they don't see it as a skill or simply enough, they don't see it as important. Now, Many of you know that I was a pastor and, and I loved it. It was, it was one of the greatest honors of my life. But one of the roles as a pastor is to preach, right? It's to speak every single week. And I took that seriously because I got the opportunity to share, in my opinion, if you're, and if you don't share this belief, I, I, don't, I don't mean to offend you, but in my opinion, the greatest message in the world, right? The gospel. So I was able to share this message every single week and I took it very seriously. And I still take it very seriously when, I, when I'm able to do it because I knew that what I shared had the potential to change someone's life. I knew that what I said had the potential to change someone's marriage. I knew that what I said had the potential to change someone's view on their circumstance or their situation. And so I remember speaking and I had my own style of speaking and teaching and, and I was connecting with people and, and people's lives were being touched. And, and, but, but I remember one day someone came up to me and they said, hey, pastor, that was a great message last Sunday. And immediately I said, what, what, what stuck out to you from it? You know, what blessed you from it? What helped you from it? And they started going around in circles, naming the whole Bible, basically. They couldn't give me the point and the principle that I shared with them. And in that moment, something happened inside of me. And I realized something needs to change in my communication because I want to connect with them. Because in my own mind, I said, if they can't tell me the principle, then that means that they couldn't apply that principle in their lives, in their circumstance, in their situation. And I never want that to happen again. And so I began to change my whole communication style and... And I share about it in, 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 in the Influence Bootcamp that I'll share a little bit with you later. But after I changed, people were coming up to me and saying what I shared with them. And they were, they were sharing notes with me. And the, you know, a few years later, they were sharing, hey, listen, this is, they were pulling out their wallets. This is what you said, and this is how it impacted my life. And lives were being touched, and lives were being transformed. And the reason I say that is because I want you to understand that whoever it is that you're communicating with, it may be inconvenient to shift and change and adjust, but it is necessary if you want to have greater impact. So I want you to write that down. I want you to say it is inconvenient, but it is necessary, right? According to Harvard Business Review, they said this, that the number one criteria, check this out. This is, this is your, your secret right here for promotion. The number one criteria for advancement and promotion for professionals is the ability to communicate effectively. It's your ability to, to communicate. So now what I want to do right now, I want us to put aside our political biases. For, I know it, politics right now, it, it's, it's intense. Coronavirus is intense, right? And I want us to put our politics aside for a moment. And I want us to watch a video. I'm going to show a video in a moment. But as you watch this three minute video, I want you to look and I want you to look at this from, and I want you to consider the differences in connecting skills between, and some of you might not remember, but if you like history, you probably remember, but you, you look at the connecting skills between President Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan, all right? So let's watch, and then we're going to come back. So let's watch that.
League of Women Voters is proud to present this presidential debate. After weeks of long-distance sparring in the media, President Carter and Ronald Reagan are face-to-face -face for the first and what will be the only time in the campaign. The ground rules for this, as agreed by you gentlemen, are these. With an estimated 80 million Americans watching at home, for both candidates, this is the moment of truth. The Reagan people were a little worried about how Reagan might do because he was never one for having a lot of hard facts at his fingertips. He, he spoke in, in themes. And I think the Carter people were also worried that Reagan might show them up. When Mr. Carter became president, inflation was 4.8%. It is now running at 12.7%. He has blamed the people of living too well. We don't have inflation because the people are living too well. We have inflation because the government is living too well. I'm surprised Governor Reagan brought this up. Carter cited chapter and verse in Reagan's record that wasn't good. In California, he had the three largest tax increases in the history of that state under his administration. He also advocates nuclear superiority with the Soviet Union. This attitude is extremely dangerous and belligerent in its tone. It is just not true. My point I have made already calls for a mutual reduction of these weapons, as I say, to the point that neither of us can represent a threat. By the 80th minute of the debate, Reagan and Carter had each landed some jabs, but there's still no decisive winner. With only five minutes to go, the time to land the knockout punch is running out. I was drafted to write a final statement, which are very important in these debates. We came up with a series of rhetorical questions for him, and one of them was, uh, just ask yourself, are you better off than you were four years ago? And 70, 80 percent of Americans sitting in their living room said, you know what? I'm not better off. I'm worse off than I was when Jimmy Carter became president. If you don't think that this course that we've been on for the last four years is what you would like to see us follow for the next four, then I could suggest another choice that you have. Not quite uh, one-fifth of the nation's vote has been counted on this election day, but Ronald Reagan has jumped into a very early and a sweeping lead. As the returns start rolling in on election night, the Reagans are at home in Los Angeles. He's in the shower, she's in the bathtub, and the phone rings, and she answers it, and they say, it's Jimmy Carter calling to concede. And she's banging on the shower door saying, Ronnie, Ronnie, you've won. And he comes out of the shower, dripping wet with a towel around him. Here's Jimmy Carter concede the election to him. video even I mean I watched it a few times and I still get chills because if you watch that debate and if you were noticing for communication skills Jimmy Carter President Jimmy Carter he came across as cold and impersonal constantly quoting facts and figures in that debate in contrast if you look at Ronald Reagan he was engaged with the audience and he was even engaged with President Carter and then he spoke directly to the American people so much so that he won the presidency, he became the next president. And not only that, but then he was later called the great communicator. So isn't that what each and every one of us want, right? No, not, not to become president, right? But don't we want our message to stick? Don't we want our products to sell? Um, can you, everybody see me? Okay, so we want uh, right, we want our, our products to sell. We want our services to change people's lives. Uh, so principle number two, and I want you to write this down. Principle number two is that connecting is all about other people. Connecting is all about others, right? So years ago, I was uh, speaking to a group uh, of about a thousand people uh, one Sunday morning, and, and this is a personal story. So, but I was speaking to them, right? And for whatever reason, I don't know why, I normally don't do this, but for whatever reason that morning, um, I became so focused on myself, right? I became focused on how I looked. I became so focused on how I was coming across. I was, 
I was coming, I was focused on how people were interpreting my message, um, how I was feeling and, 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 and it really felt like I was having an outer body experience, right? I was viewing myself on stage and um, I felt like I wasn't connecting, right? And the reason that I wasn't connecting was because I was focused too much on myself. So after the, the talk, I felt like a fraud, honestly, if I'm, if I'm honest with you guys. And I felt defeated. I felt discouraged. And I felt like I let the audience down. And I didn't let them down because I wasn't sharing a great message, but because I didn't really connect to them because I was so focused on myself. I didn't engage with them and connected with my audience in that moment. And that's so important here because I was focused on myself. So why do we focus on ourselves? And I want you to write these three things very quickly. Why do we focus on ourselves at times? Number one, immaturity, right? We're immature at times. Number two, our ego gets in the way. And number three, we fail, we fail to value everyone, right? So to connect with your audience, and I know I have speakers and preachers and teachers and business people and entrepreneurs on this call. So if you want to connect with your audience, you have to forget about yourself. You can share your story. You can share pictures of yourself, but it's not about you. It's about what your message has the power and, what, and the impact that it can make, right? So it's not about you. So the message has to be more important than the messenger. So I was speaking another story. I was speaking to a group of about 800 people and I was speaking and engaged with the audience. We were having a great time. It was, it was I, when, I, I'm, when I'm doing this, I feel like I'm alive. So I was alive in the message and, and people were connecting with me. People were leaning in, people were laughing and, and, and enjoying themselves. But something happened in that talk that engaged us even greater. Something happened. As I was sharing a story to illustrate my point, I mispronounced a word. And the second I said the word, I knew I messed up. But instead of continuing and pretend I didn't mess up, right? I knew that they knew that, that I knew that I messed up. So I wanted them to know that I knew that they knew that I messed up, right? So immediately I paused and I said, hey, I'm Puerto Rican. What you expect, right? I'm Puerto Rican. So everyone started cracking up, right? And inc including myself, it broke the ice. And at that moment, I connected with the audience. You, you, you can feel the atmosphere change. And I connected with them at an even greater and a deeper level because now they can all relate to making a mistake. And some can even relate to making a mistake in public, right? I showed them in that moment that my true purpose for being there was to add value to them, to, was to pour into them, that I wanted to serve them. And now we were able to relate to each other in a more personal way as a result of my mistake. Now, given the fact that we're all different, right? Everybody watching this, we're all different. Would you agree, right? We're all different we can assume that all of us on this training, we all want different things. We all have different results, right? So, which brings us to our next point, which is principle number three. Connecting is more of a skill than a natural talent. Rolf Waldo Emerson said this. He said, all great speakers were bad speakers first. Isn't that true? All great speakers were bad speakers first. So now, Connecting is something that you can learn how to do, right? But the reality is that you must study communication in order to improve at it. You must study communication to improve at it. And to connect with your audience, and all of us, again, have different audiences, to connect with your audience, you have to utilize your skills. And I want you to write that word, your skills and the experiences that you have. So you have to look at your skills and the experiences that you have. And there are several factors that I want to share with you. Uh, I want to share with you five. These are not the only five, but I want to give you these five, all right, that will cause people to want to listen to you, all right? And I want you to write them down. There's five things. And again, not the only five. You, you'll probably think uh, different ways that people want to listen to you. But number one, people will listen to you based on your relationships. Okay, write that down. Who you know. One of the quickest ways to gain credibility with an audience, with a group, or with an individual is to borrow it from someone who has credibility and influence with them already. Who you know, right? The old saying, 
all right? It's not what you know, it's who you know. That's partially true, right? Who you know. So who you know can open doors for you and connect you to a different audience and, 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 and can allow you to have influence over those people. Now, here's a story, a personal story, very quick story. I have a friend and, and at the time we were pastoring in the same city. And one day he invited me to speak at his church. Now, he had a lot of influence in his church. He connected with the people in his church. He poured into the people in his church. He, he valued the people in his church. And he invited me to, to come speak to his church. And because of the connection that he had with the people and the influence that he had with the people, I was able to go in and borrow his influence. And he let me borrow his influence so that I can connect with his people and impact them in a powerful way. So much so that throughout the years, they invited me back over and over again to, to add value to them, to impact them, and to share with them, even without my friend being present. Why? Because now I built my own credibility with them, but it all started based on that relationship, okay? That relationship opened doors for me. So number two is your insight, your insight, what you know, and this is huge. If you share an area of expertise, right, generously with others, you give people reason to respect you and develop a sense of connection with you. I think about Jose Pantoja, who's getting ready to share after our, our, our time together, but people always go to him for starting their own business or people go to him for, for how, do, how do I stay fit after 40, right? How do I stay fit? At, even though he's like super young, all right? He's probably gonna kill me, he's laughing right now. But how do I stay, how do I stay fit? How do I, how do I become successful? And people are always asking to pick his brain because of his insight, what he knows, right? For me, some people come to me, hey, how do I publish a book? How do I write a book? How do I achieve my goals? How do I achieve and, and, and become successful in this area? How do I get better at connecting with people or speaking? So people come to me and because of what I know, the insight, and people will go to you regardless of what you know, they'll come to you based on your insight, okay? Number three is your success, and this is important your success, what you have done, right? This, is a, this, this relates with insight. People wanna be successful. They wanna succeed, you wanna succeed. That's the reason you joined this morning. That's the reason you're watching live on Zoom and live on Facebook, it, or the reason that you're clicking this again, because you wanna succeed, right? You wanna have a successful life in whatever it is that you're doing. So because people wanna succeed, they seek out others who have accomplished something and they wanna get their advice. The old saying that success leaves clues is so true. So if you are successful in anything that you do, there will be people who will wanna connect with you and listen to you based on what you know, all right? The next one is your ability, right? What you can do. This is important. If you have a high level of ability in one area, others may wanna connect, connect with you because of that ability, right? Excellence attract, excellence connects, right? Think about individuals who perform at a high level in their profession. They often, oftentimes have instant credibility with people. People admire them instantly because of, of what they can do, right? They want to connect with them. They feel like they know them. And, and when they speak, people listen, right? Think about Michael Jordan for a moment. Now, I'm not a big fan of sports, but I've been watching The Last Dance, right? And it's a, I haven't watched all the episodes, and I'm still watching them, but The Last Dance it, you know, Michael Jordan, they highlight Michael Jordan's success, but he's made more money in endorsements than he ever did playing basketball. Now, is it because of his knowledge of the products that he endorses? Probably not, right? It's because of what he can do with the basketball, right? his ability. So, the, and then the fifth one that, that I want to talk about today is sacrifice. How you have lived, and this is huge, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is huge, sacrifice. How have you lived? right? If you're teaching something that you're not applying in your own life, then that comes across as hypocritical, right? So how have you lived? How are you living? How is your life shining, right? How is your light shining? What are you doing? How have you made sacrifices? How have you suffered tragedy and overcame those painful situations in your life and, 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 and still went through and went ahead and overcame these obstacles? Many people will relate to you because of these things, and how you have remained positive in spite of the setbacks and life's difficulties in your life. Others, others will admire you and will connect with you because of it, all right? So these are just the five connecting factors that, and these are just the beginning, but you can probably think of other reasons, right? But the point is, 
that you must take whatever skills you have, whatever you have really, and use it to connect with other people. So think about your own life, think about your audience and use whatever you have. And the more factors you have, the better you can use it to connect with others and the, the greater chance of connecting with people, right? So play to your strengths, develop your own style and cultivate whatever skill and talents that you have in order to connect with people. Now, Max Dupree said this, he said, there may be no single thing more important in our efforts to achieve meaningful work and fulfilling relationships than to learn to practice the art of communication. And the reason we're doing this is because we totally agree with Max Dupree in that statement, right? So let's just recap before we give you the other principles for a moment. Let's recap. So, so, so far we said that leadership is critical because everything worthwhile in life and, and, and everything worthwhile that you achieve in life in any area of your life will be with and through other people, right? Everything rises and falls on leadership. And so we said, what is leadership? Leadership is influence, right? And so how can I develop my influence with others? By developing the skill of connecting with other people. So how do you develop your skill to connecting with people? By learning to value people, right? So notice that there's a shift in perception, right? Takes you out of the center and it puts other people at the center like I shared in that story, right? Influence is not about impressing people, it's about connecting with them, right? It's not a logical thing, it's an emotional thing. And I know we wanna argue and we wanna say that we're logical human beings, but the reality is that oftentimes we do things based on, out of emotion. We shop on emotions, we do things out of emotions, we say things out of emotions, right? So we're emotional beings and sometimes we need to understand that we don't always see the world as it is, we see it as we are, right? And we're all different. We're all different on this call. So we see the world differently through each and every one of our eyes. So now let's try something here. And I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand for a moment, right? How many of you look at the screen, right? And raise your hand. And if you're on Facebook, you, I can't see you. So I want you to comment, right? I want you to comment. How many of you see a black urn? Say black urn, come on, real quick. Raise your hand, how many of you see a black urn? Good, okay. Hands down, how many of you see two people face to face looking at each other? Raise your hand, <laughs> all right. So it all depends on where your awareness is, right? And I want you to comment what you saw the first time, right? It all depends on where your awareness is. Once I said the opposite of what you saw first, did you see the other, right? If you didn't see the first one, is the same picture, is the same picture being, being viewed by people differently. Isn't that interesting, right? Now, the picture is the same, so what's the difference? The people, right? How people are viewing it. So there's something that happens to each and every one of us as we're growing up, and it's called conditioning, right? We've been conditioned to view the world a certain, a certain way, and, and even with our communication, right? We don't see the world always as it is. We see it as we are um, based on how we were raised growing up, based on our experiences, based on our culture, based on how we were raised, based on the challenges that we had to endure, based on all those things, our, our, our faith and different things. And this goes a long way in explaining why we don't always get what we want. We get what we are. This is important. So the implications for understanding this, they're, they're enormous, especially when it relates to communication. Because we all see the world differently. Because what? We're all different. We're all different, right? So if you're, if you're on Facebook, just comment, I'm different, right? I'm different. We see the world differently. We have different beliefs. We have different values. We have different uh, things that are important to each and every one of us. We have different passions, we have different expectations and tolerances, et cetera, right? And to ignore these differences when we're trying to communicate with our audience, when we're trying to communicate with people, we're missing the point, which leads us to our fourth principle. Connecting with people has to be based on common ground. See, if I talk to each and every one of you and I talk to you about my beliefs and my faith and my values and, and they're not your faiths and they're not your values and they're not your principles, you're not going to be invested emotionally. You might intellectually probably, but you can't relate to me. You don't have a good feeling about me, right? And worse yet, 
if I violate your beliefs, or even if you don't believe what I believe, you're probably going to get a bad feeling. But if I violate your beliefs, if I violate your values, if I violate your faith, you're probably going to want to hurt me. Now, I won't let you hurt me, but you're probably going to want to, right? <laughs> so, so if you want to connect with someone, and here's the key. If you want to connect with someone, you got to go to them. If you miss this, you will miss the point of communication. If you miss this, you're going to miss the point of communication. You got to go to them. And, and for those of you, you know, who share my faith, Jesus always went to the people, right? So if you go to where people are, you got to go to them. You have to go first. You need to connect on common ground. Now, what is common ground? Common ground is the point where, our, where, uh, where the beliefs and needs and values intersect. Ours and theirs, right? If you want people to go with you and, and you don't connect on common ground, they're not going to go with you. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be, you know, literally you wasting your time. Now, in that documentary that I told you about that I haven't finished watching, but I'm watching it and I'm enjoying it, The Last Dance, Dennis Rodman, he was a basketball player, and you see him on next to the guy with the suit. And he portrayed, he, he's being portrayed, and he, he is an outspoken kind of wild basketball player. His coach that you see on that picture, Phil Jackson, he saw his potential and he seized the opportunity to connect on common ground with Rodman. Now, in the documentary, Jackson shares a powerful story where he meets with Rodman, he calls him into his office. And as he calls him to his office, they discovered their common respect and interest for the Native American culture. Now, the coach had a lot of Native American artifacts in his office. And as soon as Rodman walks in, he looks at all this thing, all these artifacts around him, and he says, wow, which makes him pull out a necklace and he also, that he also had about a Native American uh, art, you know, that had a Native American artifact. Ja Jackson, being wise, he used that as a common ground to build a deeper bond with Rodman, and that bond became both present on and off the field. So now Dennis Rodman said this, he said, he said, he, he, he said, talking about his coach, he said, they don't, he don't look at me as a basketball player. He looks at me as a great friend, all because he connected on common ground. That's the power of connecting with your audience and whoever it is, if you're trying to sell a product or whatever it is, connecting with your audience. Now, there's four common barriers of why we don't connect on common ground, why we don't try to find it out first, right? There, there's four. Assumption, right? We already know what others know, feel, and want. We assume that we know. I already know what they know, feel, or want, right? Number two, arrogance. I don't need to know what others know, feel, or want. That's a common barrier. Number three, indifference. I don't care to know what others know, feel, or want. And then the fourth one is control. I don't want others to know what I know, feel, or want. And so these are the four common barriers of of building your connecting skills with your audience, all right? Now, if you're wondering, I'm going to give you the next point in a minute, but if you're wondering, man, this is a lot to take in. It is a lot to take in. I know I'm giving you a lot of information. But it takes all this to learn and to develop, to connect really with people so that you can influence people in an ethical way. And if you're saying this is a lot, that's our next principle. Connecting takes energy. That's our fifth principle. Connecting with people takes energy. When I was a pastor, I would speak every week and I would leave uh, every Sunday. I, I would be tired. Don't give me any appointments. I don't want to talk to nobody. I just want to go home, go for a walk and relax because it, it connection takes energy, right? It takes energy to connect with people. So it's an investment necessary that you need to make in order for you to connect with your audience. But that's true of anything in life, isn't it? There's an investment necessary. You have to sow if you expect to reap. And if you don't reap, I mean, if you don't sow, you're not gonna reap anything, right? But if you wanna reap a harvest in fruitful relationships, then you need to invest and sow the seeds of connection. Now, one day I came home tired day after day that week and I was working uh, you know, in, in the vice president's residence and, and I was tired and coming home that week and, and my wife and I started analyzing why I was so tired that week, right? Abnormally tired. Now, we realized that all week I was making an intentional effort to connect with people. Notice I said intentional effort to connect with people that I got to work with. 
I, from, the, from, the, from the cleaning lady to the people that I worked with, learning people's background, asking questions, practicing the art of listening for hours, right? Making the conversation about them. And, and I learned so many powerful stories, guys. And one in particular about this man who was raised in a communist country. And he was sharing all the details of, of that powerful moment when his country, they got tired of it. And they came together in the square and they, and they kicked this dictator out of that country. And, and he lived through that event in history. And he was sharing this with me. And, and then I learned about another man coming from Africa and how he served in our military and, and how he became successful. And, and, and all these powerful stories, I was just soaking them in and enjoying every single one of these stories. But guess what? At the end of the week, I was tired. I was drained. Why? Because connect, connecting with people requires energy. I learned a lot, but it requires energy. And that is our fifth point. Now, I'm out of time with my part here today. We're going to get into the second part after a five minute break, but I want to say this before we're going, uh, you know, we're going to have to leave it here, but right before we finish up here, let me just cover this because I think it's the key to any kind of program of change and transformation. How many of you by raising of your hands and if you're on Facebook, I want you to comment. I enjoyed this, right? If you found this interesting and enjoyable, I want you to wave at me, raise your hand, right? All right. And if you enjoyed it on Facebook, if you're watching, I want you to, I want you to comment. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. Right now, hands went up and I, and I want you to write it on Facebook. All right. Don't be shy. I want to know, right? Make sure I'm doing, I'm connecting with you. Make sure that I'm speaking to you. Um, I know we have a little delay on Facebook, but now a lot of good information and hopefully I presented it in a good and entertaining way, right? That, that, that was the message was conveyed. Now, I do want to say this, guys, change is not an event. Change is not an event. Change is a process. Change is a process. And sometimes we have an inclination, we have a tendency to overestimate the event and underestimate the process. You see, an event like this is important, but it won't develop you as a communicator and as a connector. You can get you started and hopefully you're going to be able to apply these principles right away in your business, in your life, in your ministry. But if you think about it, developing as a communicator and as a connector, we're talking about changing our behaviors. And unfortunately, we can't just snap our fingers and, and just be changed, right? So we can continue to communicate and connect the way we have been with our audiences, or we can choose to intentionally apply these principles and develop these skills to increase our influence and our leadership. And as a result, increase our results, which all of us raised our hands.